Sia yato nivyat itaratas chate sua vigya swarat. Janma diasayatam vayaritaratas chate sa vigya swarat. Tene brahma hirdaya adikabaye muyantiyat surayaha. Tene brahma rudaya adikabaye muyantiyat surayaha. Tejo varimadam yata vinimayo yatra trisargo mesha. Tejo varimnita yata vinimayo yatra trisargo mesha. Dhamna svena sada nirasta kuhakam satyam param di mahi. Dhamna svena sada nirasta kuhakam satyam param di mahi. Oh my Lord, Sri Krishna, son of Vasudeva. Oh my Lord, Sri Krishna, son of Vasudeva. All pervading personality of God. All pervading personality of God. I offer my respectful obeisances unto you. I offer my respectful obeisances unto you. I meditate upon Lord Sri Krishna because He is the absolute truth. I meditate upon Lord Sri Krishna because He is the absolute truth. And the primeval cause of all causes. And the primeval cause of all causes. Of the creation, sustenance, and destruction of the manifested universes. Of the creation, sustenance, destruction of the manifested universe. He is directly and indirectly conscious. Of all manifestations. He is directly and indirectly conscious of all manifestations. And he is independent because there is no other cause beyond him. And he is independent because there is no other cause beyond him. It is he only who first imparted the Vedic knowledge unto the heart of Brahmaji. It is he only who first imparted the Vedic knowledge unto the heart of Brahmaji. The original living being. The original living being. By him, even the great sages and demigods are placed into illusion. By him, even the great sages and demigods are placed into illusion. As one is bewildered by the illusory representation. As one is bewildered. By by the illusory representation of water seen in fire or land seen on water. Of water seen in fire or land seen on water. Only because of him do the material universes. Only because of him do the material universes. Temporarily manifested by the reaction to the three modes of nature. Temporarily manifested by the reaction to the three modes of nature. Appear factual although they are unreal. Appear factual although they are unreal. I therefore meditate upon him, Lord Sri Krishna. I therefore meditate upon him, Lord Sri Krishna, who is eternally existent in the transcendental abode, who is eternally existent in the transcendental abode, which is forever free from the illusory representations of the material world, which is forever free from the illusory representation. I meditate upon him, for he is the absolute truth. I meditate upon him, for he is the absolute. Dharma projita kaitro vocha. Dharma Prujita Kaita Utra Paramo Nirmat Saranam Satam Paramo Nirmat Saranam Satam Vedyam Vastavam Atra Vastu Vedyam Vastavam Atra Vastu Shivadam Tapa Atrayon Mulanam Shivadam Tapa Atrayon Mulanam Shimad Bhagavate Mahamuni Krite Shimad Bhagavate Mahamuni Krite Kimva Parer Ishwaraha Kimva Parer Ishwaraha Sadyo Hridi Avarudya Tetra Sadyo Hridi Avarudya Tetra Kriti Bihi Susu Subis Takshana Completely rejecting all religious activities which are materially motivated. Completely rejecting all religious activities which are materially motivated. This Bhagavata Purana propounds the highest truth. This Bhagavata Purana propounds the highest truth, which is understandable by those devotees who are fully pure in heart. Which is understandable by those devotees who are fully pure in heart. The highest truth is reality distinguished from illusion for the welfare of all. The highest truth that the reality distinguished from illusion for the welfare of all. Such truth uproots the threefold miseries. Such a truth uproots the threefold miseries. This beautiful Bhagavatam compiled by the great sage Vyasa. In his maturity. And this beautiful Bhagavatam compiled by the great sage Vyasadeva in his maturity. Is sufficient in itself for God realization. Is sufficient itself for God realization. What is the need of any other scripture? What is the need of the other scripture? As soon as one attentively and submissively hears the message of Bhagavatam. As soon as one attentively and submissively hears the message of Bhagavatam. By this culture of knowledge. By this culture of knowledge. The Supreme Lord is established within his heart. The Supreme Lord is established within his heart. Nigama kalpatoror galitam phalam. Nigama kalpatoror galitam phalam. Sukumukad amrita dravya samyutam. Sukumukad amrita dravya samyutam. Vibata Bhagavatam rasam malayam. Vibata Bhagavatam rasam malayam. Mur aho raska bhuvi bhavu kaha. Mur aho raska bhuvi bhavu kaha. Oh, expert and thoughtful man, relish Shrimad Bhagavatam. Oh, expert and thoughtful man, relish Shrimad Bhagavatam. The mature fruit of the desire tree of Vedic literatures. The mature fruit of the desire tree of the Vedic literatures. It emanated from the lips of Sri Sukadev Goswami. It emanated from the lips of Sri Sukadev Goswami. Therefore, this fruit has become even more tasteful. Therefore, this fruit has become even more tasteful. Although its nectar and juice was already relishable for all. Although its nectar and juice was already relishable for all. Including 
liberated souls. Including liberated souls. Shinvatam Swakata Krishna. Shinvatam Swakata Krishna. Punya Shravana Kirtana. Punya Shravana Kirtana. Hridyantak Stohi Abhadrani. Hridyantak Stohi Abhadrani. Vidhu Noti Surit Satam. Vidhu Noti Surit Satam. To hear about Krishna from Vedic literatures. To hear about Krishna from the Vedic Lord Or to hear from him directly through the Bhagavad Gita. Or to hear from him directly from the Bhagavad Gita. Is itself righteous activity. Is itself righteous activity. And for one who hears about Krishna. And for one who hears about Krishna. Lord Krishna who is dwelling within everyone's heart. Lord Krishna who is dwelling within everyone's acts heart. Acts as a best wishing friend. Acts as the best wishing and friend. And purifies a devotee who constantly engages in hearing of him. And purifies the body who is constantly engaged in hearing Nasta of him. Nastapreshu Bhadreshu. Nastapreshu Bhadreshu. Nityam Bhagavata Sevaya. Nityam Bhagavata Sevaya. Bhagavati Uttama Sloke. Bhagavati Uttama Sloke. Bhakti Bhavati Naistiki. Bhakti Bhavati Naistiki. In this way, a devotee naturally develops his dormant transcendental knowledge. In this way, a devotee naturally develops his dormant transcendental knowledge. As he hears more about Krishna from the Bhagavatam. As he hears more about Krishna from the Bhagavatam. And from the devotees. And from the devotees. He becomes fixed in the devotional service of the Lord. He becomes fixed in the devotional service of the Lord. Tadarajas tamo bhava. Tadarajas tamo bhava. Kamalo bhadayaschaye. Kamalo bhadayaschaye. Chetetar anavidam. Chetetar anavidam. Stitam sattve prasiddhati. Stitam sattve prasiddhati. By development of devotional service. By development of devotional service. One becomes freed from the modes of passion and ignorance. One becomes freed from the mode of passion of ignorance. And thus material loss and avarice are diminished. And thus material loss and avarice are diminished. Evam prasanna manaso. Evam prasanna manaso. Bhagavad Bhagavad Bhakti Yogataha. Bhagavad Bhakti Yogataha. Bhagavad Tattva Vigyanam. Bhagavad Tattva Vigyanam. When these impurities are wiped away, when these impurities are wiped away, the candidate remains steady in his position of pure goodness. The candidate remains steady in his position of pure becomes goodness. Becomes enlivened by devotional service. Becomes enlivened by devotional service. And understands the science of God perfectly. And understands the science of God perfectly. Vidyate hridaya grantis. Vidyate hridaya grantis. Chidyante sarva samsaya. Chidyante sarva samsaya. Chidyante chas shakarmani. Chidyante chas shakarmani. Drista evat manishwari. Drista evat manishwari. Thus bhakti yoga serves the heart not of material affection. Thus the bhakti yoga serves the heart not of material affection. And enables one to come at once to the stage of a samsayam samagram. And enables one to come at once to the stage of a samsayam samagram. Understanding of the supreme personal, uh, supreme absolute truth personality of Godhead. Understanding the supreme absolute truth personality of Godhead. Therefore, only by hearing from Krishna or from his devotee. Therefore, only by hearing from Krishna. From his devotee. In Krishna consciousness. In Krishna consciousness. Can one understand the science of Krishna? Can one understand the science of Krishna? Shrimad Bhagavatam, God can't do one chapter. 18, verse number 13. Tuliyama Lavinapi Tuliyama Bhagavat Sangi Sangasya Bhagavat Sangi Sangasya Martyanam Kim Utasisa. Martyanam Kim Utasisa. Translation by Srila Prabhupada Kija. The value of a moment's association with the devotee of the Lord can even be compared, cannot even be compared to the attainment of heavenly planets or liberation from matter. And what to speak of worldly benedictions in the form of material prosperity, prosperity which are for those who are meant for death. Srila Prabhupada Ki Jai. Purport by His Divine Grace, A.C. Bhakti Vedanta Swami, Srila Prabhupada. When there are some points, uh, there, when there are some similar points, it is possible to compare one thing to another. One cannot compare the association of a pure devotee to anything material. Men who are addicted to material happiness aspire to reach the heavenly planets like the moon, 
Venus and Indra Loka. And those who are advanced in material philosophical speculations aspire after liberation from all material bondage. When one becomes frustrated with all kinds of material advancement, one desires the opposite type of liberation, which is called apunar bhava, or no rebirth. But the pure devotees of the Lord do not aspire after the happiness after the happiness obtained in the heavenly kingdom, nor do they aspire for liberation from material bondage. In other words, for the pure devotees of the Lord, the material pleasures obtainable in the heavenly planets are like phantasmagoria, and because they are already liberated from all material conceptions of pleasure and distress, they are factually liberated even in the material world. This means that the pure devotees of the Lord are engaged in a transcendental existence, namely, in the loving service of the Lord, both in the material world and in the spiritual world. As a government servant is always the same, either in the office or at home or at any place, so a devotee has nothing to do with anything material, for he is exclusively engaged in the transcendental service of the Lord. Since he has nothing to do with anything material, what pleasure can be derived from material benedictions like kingship or other overlordships, which are finished quickly with the end of the body? Devotional service is eternal. It has no end because it is spiritual. Therefore, since the assets of a pure devotee are completely different from material assets, there's no comparison between the two. <clears throat> Sutta Goswami was a pure devotee of the Lord, and therefore his association with the rishis in Naimisharanya is unique. In the material world, association with gross materialists is very, very, uh, veritably condemned. The materialist is called Yosit Sangi, or one who is much attached to material entanglement, meaning uh, material entanglement with women and other paraphernalia. Such attachment is conditioned because it drives away the benedictions of life and prosperity. And just the opposite is Bhagavata Sangi, or one who is always in the association of the Lord's name, form, qualities, etc. Such association is always desirable. It is worshipable. It is praiseworthy. And one may accept it as the highest goal of life. Srila Prabhupada Ki Jai. So here it's saying that a moment's association with a genuine devotee of the Lord cannot be, cannot even be compared to attainment of hell, heavenly planets or liberation from matter and what to speak of worldly benedictions in the form of material prosperity which are, the, which are for those who are meant for death so here we see a real attribution of value. What has real value? Something that is eternally beneficial. That has real value. So let's say you get a Barbie doll for Christmas. Does that have eternal benefit? It's a big no with a zero. It has no real benefit. Because let's say your company gives you a bonus of $500,000 for the good work you've done. Is, does that have eternal benefit? Answer, a resounding no again with a zero. So, none of those things have eternal benefit. But you can maybe use them in the service of Krishna. If you get a $50,000 or a $500,000 or $1 million bonus at the end of the year, you could use it in Krishna's service. The fact that you used it in Krishna's service means that it has eternal benefit. But if you just use it for sense gratification, then 
you are condemned to death. It's very interesting. Being condemned to death. Most people are condemned to death because they don't know how to use the assets they get in the service of Krishna. They think it's meant for me. Ahamameti. I, me, and mine. This is mine. That is mine. Everything is mine. Mine, mine, mine. I, me, and mine. That's called the false ego. And that's what keeps people in the cycle of birth and death. So, how do we get out of this terrible cycle? Well, this is explained in Bhagavad Gita. First Canto, second chapter, verse 18, which says, Nasta presu badresu nityam bhagavata sevaya bhagavati utama sloke bhakti bhavati naistiki. And this verse says, by regular attendance in classes on the Bhagavatam and by rendering of service to the pure devotee, all that is troublesome to the heart is almost completely destroyed and loving service unto the personality of Godhead who is praised with transcendental songs is established as an irrevocable fact. Well, Prabhupada says in a purport, here is the remedy for eliminating all inauspicious things within the heart, which are considered to be obstacles in the path of self-realization. The remedy is the association of the Bhagavatas. There are two types of Bhagavatas, namely the book Bhagavata and the, per and the devotee Bhagavata. Both the Bhagavatas are competent remedies, and both of them, or either of them, can be good enough to eliminate the obstacles. A devotee Bhagavata is as good as the book Bhagavata, because the devotee Bhagavata le leads his life in terms of the book Bhagavata. And the book Bhagavata is full of information about the personality of Godhead and his pure devotees, who are also Bhagavatas. Bhagavata book and person are identical. The devotee Bhagavata is a direct representative of Bhagavan, the personality of Godhead. So by pleasing the devotee Bhagavata, one can receive the benefit of the book Bhagavata. Human reason fails to understand how, by serving the devotee Bhagavata or the book Bhagavata, one gets gradual promotion on the path of devotion. But actually, these are facts explained by Srila Narada Deva, who happened to be a maidservant's son in his previous life. The maidservant was engaged in the menial service of the sages, and thus he also, meaning Narada, came in contact with them. And simply by associating with them and accepting the remnants of foodstuff left by the sages, the son of the maidservant got the chance to become the great devotee and personality, Sri Narada Deva. These are the miraculous effects of the association of Bhagavatas. And to understand these effects practically, it should be noted that by such sincere association of the Bhagavatas, one is sure to receive transcendental knowledge very easily, with the result that he becomes fixed in the devotional service of the Lord. The more progress is made in devotional service under the guidance of the Bhagavatas, the more one becomes fixed in the transcendental loving service of the Lord. The messages of the book Bhagavata, therefore, have to be received from the devotee Bhagavata. And the combination of these two Bhagavatas will help the neophyte devotee to make progress on and on. So here's a wonderful explanation by Srila Prabhupada. Of, and that's, that's the meaning of this verse today. Tulayama lavanapi naswargam napunarbhavam. The value of a moment's association with the devotee of the Lord cannot even be compared to the attainment of heavenly planets or liberation from matter and what to speak of worldly benedictions in the form of material prosperity which are for those who are meant for death. Now we can see this. The richer people become, most people, 
Of course, Prahlad Maharaj was unbelievably rich. Dhruva Maharaj was unbelievably rich. And Prithu Maharaj was unbelievably rich. And Yudhisthira Maharaj was unbelievably rich. And of course, Lord Ramachandra was unbelievably rich. But they didn't get corrupted because they used everything in the service of Krishna. But even if you use one farthing, one farthing is like one penny, in the service of Krishna, you go to hell. I'm sorry. Even if you use one farthing in the service of sense gratification, you go to hell. Prabhupada explains this to Bob Cohen, who later on became Brahmatirtha Das, in Perfect Questions, Perfect Answers. And there he says, uh, on the goodwill of Krishna consciousness, devotees will receive all kinds of donations. If they use even one penny for their sense gratification or that money that was meant for serving Krishna, they go to hell. Did you know this? Did you know that, bro? Did you know that? Did you know that? One penny, he says. Read, perfect questions, perfect answers. You'll see that. So, here it says, what to speak of worldly benedictions in the form of material prosperity, which are for those who are meant for death. So now you can tell your friends, oh, Prabhu, uh, you're... Your material prosperity is meant for death. You say, what? What did you say? That, that sounds like an insult. That sounds like a curse. I say, no, no, no. That's, that's a fact. <laughs> Here it is. Srimad Bhagavatam, Canto 1, chapter 18, verse number 13. But if you use the same thing, whether it's one penny or millions of dollars for the service of Krishna, and you go back, to, then you are back to Godhead already, even in the material world. So this is also explained in the first canto, 18th chapter, verses 18 and 19, where it says, Sutta Goswami said, O oh God, although we are born in a mixed caste, we are still promoted in birthright simply by serving and following the great who are advanced in knowledge. Even by conversing with such great souls, one can without delay cleanse oneself of all disqualifications resulting from lower births. So Prabhupada explains in the purport, Sutta Goswami did not take his birth as a Bra in a Brahmin family. He was born in a family of mixed caste or an uncultured low family. But because of higher association, like Sri Sukadev Goswami and the great rishis of Naimi Sharanya, certainly the disqualification of inferior birth was washed off. Lord Sri Chaitanya Mahaprabhu followed this principle in pursuance of the Vedic usage, usages. And by his transcendental association, he elevated many lowborn or those disqualified by birth or action to the status of devotional service and established them in the position of acharyas, or authorities. Here clearly stated, here clearly stated that any man, whatever he may be, whether a brahmana or sudra by birth, or a householder or a mendicant in the order of society, if he is conversant with the science of Krishna, he can be accepted as an acharya or guru, that is, a spiritual master. Sutta Goswami learned the science of Krishna from great rishis and authorities like Sukadeva Goswami and Vyasadeva, and he was so qualified that even the sages of Naimisharanya eagerly wanted to hear from him the science of Krishna in the form of Srimad Bhagavatam. So he had the double association of great devotees by hearing and preaching. Transcendental science, or the science of Krishna, has to be learned from the authorities, and when one preaches the science, he becomes still more qualified. So Sutta Goswami had both the advantages and thus had both the advantages and thus undoubtedly he was completely freed from all disqualifications of low birth and mental agonies. This verse definitely proves that Sri Sukadeva Goswami did not refuse to teach Sutta Goswami 
about the transcendental science, nor did the sages of Naimisharanya refuse to hear lessons from him because of his inferior birth. This means that thousands of years ago there was no bar to learning or preaching the transcendental science because of inferior birth. The rigidity of the so-called caste system in Hindu society became prominent within only 100 years or so when the number of Dvijabandhus or disqualified men in the families of higher caste increased. Lord Sri Chaitanya revived the original Vedic system and he elevated Thakur Haridas to the position of Namacharya or the authority in preaching the glories of the holy name of the Lord although His Holiness Srila Haridas Thakura was pleased to appear in the family of Mohammedans. Well, this is an amazing purport. This now fixes clearly that the modern practice of certain types of Vaishnavas in South India is bogus and actually demoniac. They refuse to teach people lower caste the Vedas and learn the Vedic mantras. They only want to teach sons of uh, Brahmanas the Vedic the Sanskrit or the Vedic uh, chant, chanting of the Vedic mantras. And what does Prabhupada say? The rigidity of the so-called caste system in Hindu society became prominent within only 100 years or so when a number of Dvijabandhus, those are disqualified sons of Brahmanas, or disqualified men in the families of higher caste, increased. Well, he's, he's writing this in the 1960s. So if we go back 100 years, it's 1860, or the middle of the 19th century. This whole idea of we only, the, 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 the certain Sri Vaishnavas in South India only teach Brahmanas, they don't teach anyone else. Now, it's not only the Sri Vaishnavas, it's the Shaivites also. The Shaivites also have uh, Brahmanas. And they have what's called Sankaracharyas, like the Sankaracharya of Kanchipuram. The Sankaracharya in the, what is it, three or four, four uh, holiest places for uh, uh, I think it's a, a Badr Gashram, Kanchipuram, it might be uh, also in Orissa, and, and uh, there's another place, I don't know. Maybe it's Sri, uh, I don't know where the fourth place is. Anyway, uh, in South India, one village, I forgot to tell me this story, it might be, uh, it might be, uh, hmm. Ananda Ram, is it? Huh? You told me, right? Okay. Yes. Prabhupada is here. Uh, Prabhu here is to confirm this story. There was a village in South India that was going to convert to uh, Islam. And some of the people in that village, you know, I mean, the village elder decided. Some of the people in that village were horrified. So they contacted the, con the uh, Sankaracharya Kanchipuram. Was it Kanchipuram? Yeah. They asked him to come and convince the elders and convince the people not to convert. Was it to Christianity or? Christianity. Yeah, it was Christianity. They were going to convert to Christianity. So he came and he began to speak. And after he finished giving his speech, the leader of the village said, Sir, he said, we appreciate you have come here. And we will not convert to Christianity if you can afford us one blessing. So Kanchipur, the, the Sankaracharya said, what is that? He said, you make us Brahmanas. Without saying one word, he stood up and walked out. You see how insulting that is. He didn't even say a word, right? He didn't say, why don't you explain, Prabhu? Go ahead, you explain. So, speak in the microphone. Speak in the microphone. People felt that, you know, we are getting discriminated being, uh, you know, lower caste people. So, uh, 
we want to be converted to Brahmins. Just give us one thread and make us as Brahmin and we will not convert to Islam, uh, Christianity. We'll just stay as uh, Hindus. And he said, that cannot be done. And, <laughs> and he just left. So that's the problem. He didn't have a... Did he say it or did he just walk out? He just walked out. No, he just walked yeah. out. He didn't even say it. He just walked out. That's so insulting. Yeah. yeah. Thank you, Prabhu. See, we're not, we're not making anything up. These are facts. And this is why Hinduism is failing. Every year I get this uh, communication from a Christian group in India. And they give their uh, progress during the year. So the latest one I just got, they always give it in the month of December. And they're, they're, of course, they're soliciting uh, donations. He said, this year, 2020, we opened 20 new churches. I think it's in, I'm not sure where this, I think it's in Tamil Nadu. He said, 20 new churches. And each church costs approximately $17,000. And of course, in each church, they train someone to be a priest, a Hindu. And then they, there's a picture of, you know, all these ladies and men dressed in saris and dhotis who are new converts in, in front of the new church. 25 in one year, and they're usually in villages. So they're making tremendous, tremendous uh, progress. And then, then he makes his, then the, the person sending this out makes an appeal. That it only costs 17,000. Then he shows pictures of families in the United States, American Christians, who donated $17,000 to build a temple in Tamil Nadu. Did you know this? Well, if you go visit Tamil Nadu or, or, or uh, Andre, you, you'll know it because you'll see Christian churches everywhere. You'll see Christian churches in every Dev, De, uh, Divya Desam now. And those churches are bigger than the Vaishnava temples. Bigger and more modern. And everybody's allowed inside of it. And everyone that comes inside is trained in the Bible. This is what's going on in India. And what did Prabhupada say here? He said, he said that the, uh, he said the rigidity of the so-called caste system in Hindu society became prominent within only 100 years or so, when the number of Dwija Bandhus, or disqualified men in the families of higher caste, increased. Lord Sri Chaitanya revived the original Vedic system, and he elevated Thakur Haridas to the position of Namacharya, or the authority in preaching the glories of the holy name of the Lord, although His Holiness, Srila Haridas Thakur, was pleased to appear in a family of Mohammedans. Would you ever see a person born in an Islamic family become Sankaracharya of Kanchipuram? No, you wouldn't see it. But in Lord Chaitanya's time, it happened. Being Namacharya of the Holy Name is higher than being Sankaracharya of Kanchipuram. So this is what we're up against. And everyone is sleeping, <clears throat> absent in, in execution of duty, because uh, they, they take, people are taking it for granted, you know, that uh, uh, why are they taking things for granted? Because they were never trained properly by the brahmanas. The brahmanas simply are encouraging people to, to do ha hu hi ha hu uh, rituals for material benefit. There's no teaching at all. If you ever hear them preach, it's a bunch of nonsense what they say. There's nothing valid in what they're saying. But they, they put all the emphasis on the ritual. So therefore, 
uh, even the kids that they train in saying the Vedic mantras, they don't know that much either. They know how to recite the mantras nicely, but they don't know, understand profoundly the philosophy. How can they understand when the, when the people who are teaching them don't understand? Ramanujacharya had five gurus, one initiating guru and, and four uh, you know, instructing gurus. Two of them were sudras, were born in sudra families, but he accepted them as guru because they knew the philosophy of Krishna consciousness. And here we see Sutta Goswami was born, not born in a, in a pure Brahmana family, but yet he was elevated by, uh, by uh, Sukadev Goswami to the position of Acharya by training. So he's, Prabhupada says, such is the power of pure devotees of the Lord. The Ganges water is accepted as pure, and one can become purified after taking a bath in the waters of the Ganges. But as far as the great devotees of the Lord are concerned, they can purify a degraded soul even by being seen by the lowborn. In other words, just seeing a pure devotee is enough to purify even a lowborn person. And what to speak of association? So these are some points today. I mean, there's a lot more that can be said on this subject, a lot more verses that are pertinent. But we'll right, stop right there. Are there any questions? Question? Uh, just, just a statistic that uh, in the last 10 years or so, up to like 2000, what, 2011, Christian population in uh, Tamil Nadu. Say in the microphone, please. So, this is a statistic on the internet, but uh, between 2001 to 2011, the Christian population in Tamil Nadu grew by 16.73 percent to come to like the total is uh, was uh, right now is about 6.12 percent of the entire population. Is that? It's more than that. More than that. More than that? <laughs> yeah. yeah. Just mm. go to Tamil Nadu, you'll see. It's way more than that. How many people live in Tamil Nadu? 70 million? Maybe. Right now it's uh, about 4 million, 4.5 million is Christians. No, but how many people live in Tamil Nadu? 70 million? 80 million people? 67. 67, 67 million. No, it's 83 million. 83 million, right. Right. It's more than that, Prabhu. That's hmm. not, that's, that, that, that figure is not correct. That's probably not right. Well, I don't know for sure, but if you go there, it doesn't look like that. <laughs> it looks like there are way more, way more people. Anyway, I might be wrong. Okay. Yeah, but, but it's growing. <laughs> it's growing tremendously. Hmm. Tamil Nadu, Andhra, in fact, what, the governor of Andhra is a, is a Christian? Chief Minister. Chief Minister, sorry. Chief Minister, yeah. Okay, well, we'll stop right there. Merry Christmas. <laughs> All glories to Jesus. Howdy <laughs> <laughs> ball. Srila Prabhupada ki jai.